Now, other interesting business news, you have ESPN in chats with NBA, the NFL, and the MLB, which are all balls teams. You have the National Basketball Association, National Football Association, and you have the Major League Baseball Association. All the balls. Wait, National Football, National... They, I guess they didn't mention the NHL yet. Perhaps there's another... Maybe there's a reason for that. Well, I digress. Either way, the balls companies are all, all in contact with ESPN. Because ESPN is a little bit of a pickle. Because they're part of Disney, which Mickey Mouse, that little rat, I mean cute, adorable, adorable mouse, not at all morally vacuous, corrupt, or um, morally opaque, or disgusting, targeting towards kids, but they're bleeding, and part of Mickey, it, there's a little gangrene infecting Mickey's leg. They want to cut it off. The CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, has said publicly that he debates if he actually doesn't know. He says, I don't know if the legacy TV parts of the company are really essential. I don't know if they're really essential for Disney, the company. So in terms of what Disney owns, in terms of TV legacy assets, think of the cable box. You've got ESPN, you have ABC, you also have FX, and the Disney Channel, and National Geographic, and one or two I can't remember because it's legacy cable, no one cares really. And ESPN, they've been bleeding for quite some time. I often like to use the metaphor of it's one of those issues similar to doctors. The cure temporarily helped, but then in the end it killed the company. Now ESPN, Ben Shapiro actually wrote this in his book called Primetime Propaganda, where he analyzes the big three media companies, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS, and kind of the progress of these companies going from a pure profit type of business model to more of a virtue business model where they put a premium on pushing political ideologies it wasn't solely just pushing content that was making the most money. And of course, ESPN was an outbranch of one of those companies, I believe it was ABC. And ESPN, they had some struggling, I think it was the 90s, they had a little struggling because people weren't turning in to look at the sports balls as much. So ESPN decided to make it more of a reality TV with, you have sports broadcasters having political commentary. This did temporarily increase the ratings because controversy does sell and it is there's more, of an, there's more of an audience that's interested. It's not just sports people, but it's political people, folks like drama. Now they're tuning in. So temporarily, many argue that actually helped the company, but long-term, a lot of people, including myself, feel you alienate the actual sports balls fans because they're tuning in to watch sports. They want to hear Charles Barkley claim that you're a redneck because you don't like, you're not buying Bud Light anymore because you're embracing the Bud Light boycott, which I don't know if he's on ESPN, but he's, he's one of the sports balls analyzers. ESPN, I think, in terms of when I stopped watching it, I've never been a big sports balls fan, but I remember a couple of years back, you had an instance where one of those players, one of those morally vacuous piece of shit players, actually attacked his wife with a knife. And someone on the ESPN channel were saying, oh well, yeah, this is why it wouldn't even matter if she had a gun because he had a knife. And they were, they were kind of promulgating that their belief was that guns are bad, which that person, they claim they're American, but... This is on ESPN. They were talking about, oh yeah, you know, guns are bad. A gun would not have helped that woman out because there's a big, you know, big football player with a knife. Which I'm trying to think of a nice. I'm trying to think of a word appropriate enough to um, to define that moronic statement. Because as a wise man once said, God made man. Samuel Colt made man equal. Samuel Colt being perhaps one of the most prolific firearm designers in history, who successfully patented the first successful re revolver. So it was a, AKA the one that actually worked, the other ones misfired, they, different mechanisms weren't working. And it's true. This one, that's why I always tell people, I think there should be an extra emphasis on arming women so they can appropriately defend themselves in all situations when they don't have their partner to defend them for them. And in this case, you had ESPN saying, oh yeah, that, that wouldn't have helped her. Uh, yeah, it, uh, 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 110% it would. A gun doesn't matter if it's held by a 90 pound woman or a 200 pound linebacker it's going to stop them. So in my social circle, a lot of my friends started to notice the political statements in ESPN as well. And during one of our debates, or uh, we were talking about, you know, Second Amendment, recent laws, rules, stipulations, that came up. And a couple of my friends actually said that's why they stopped watching ESPN because of that particular moment. Because a lot of them were pro-gun and to them, they saw now ESPN looks like an anti-gun company because of that one, that one uh, spokesperson. And again, they're a sports balls company. They're supposed to talk about throwing the pigskin 20 yards into a hoop or whatever they talk about. 
It's not even a pigskin anymore, so it's pathetic. It's some synthetic material. They took that job away from the pig. How, on a, how, how insensitive was that? But I digress. In terms of ESPN now, you have Disney looking to slash a bunch of their legacy media and to try to make Disney profitable. Disney Plus is going to lose an estimated please, $800 million, Q3. That's, that's a lot of money to piss away. And eventually you need to make a profit unless you're the government. So it looks like they're talking to all these comp- these sports leagues and organizations, but I mean, the NBA, the NFL, MLB, they, they already have lucrative contracts with other companies. So I know famously one of the things that helped YouTube premium grow is because they negotiated with the NFL to get the Sunday package. So if you want to tune into the sports balls team on the Sunday game, you have to buy YouTube premium. A smart business move by YouTube and parent company Google Alphabet because that exclusivity means you have to go there. But I don't think ESPN has enough money to lure them, to lure them the, these organizations. So they're basically begging them to become a partner. At the end of the day, why? If you have the resources of the NFL, for example, which is a multi-billion dollar organization, you have the resources to spend maybe a... Mm, I don't know, a couple hundred million to build out your own infrastructure. It's even cheaper if you just throw it in Amazon Web Services or, you know, Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, although they renamed it because they hate, they're terrible at marketing with Microsoft usually. But why not? Why don't they just build it out themselves? They have the cash. They can do an upfront investment. They build out the infrastructure, build another streaming platform, and they get paid directly from the fans. That's certainly in the realm of technological capabilities. What does ESPN add? That's a real question. And at this time, I really don't know. I would just say, if I was in charge of the NBA or the NFL, and I would just say, hey, all the teams are going to come together. Every team's going to chip in X amount of dollars. We're going to build the NFL Plus package. And it's going to be an app on the phone and on the computer and on the, on the TV. If you want to turn into this app, it'll show you every game that our business is hosting. Now, that is a little bit different than the current where they actually sell the rights. So like with the NFL, they sold the rights, the broadcasting rights to YouTube. And that's another way they can make money. ESPN isn't saying we're going to give you broadcasting. They're, they're not paying them up front for a big broadcasting deal. They're looking for a partnership. And long term, I don't see how it's going to be successful for either organizations. So I wouldn't be surprised if these teams just turn them down politely, either build out their own infrastructure or continue to sell the broadcasting rights to other companies like YouTube. You also have ABC and other legacy networks who, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. But I don't see the compelling use case from ESPN to really entice them to join. And again, ESPN is more divisive. Yes, politics have also infected other sports organizations, making it less attractive for mass consumption. But at the end of the day, I don't see this being a really good strategic relationship. And if anything, Maybe this will be in the business blunder in the section in a couple weeks. Who sees? Or who knows? We'll, we will see. Time shall tell. Now, thank you again for taking the time to tune in. I really appreciate it if you take the time to subscribe. We're trying to get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of July, and we're getting closer and closer and closer. Also, don't forget to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers. Heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.